This tutorial is about angle angle side, angle side angle, and hypotenuse leg triangle congruence. Let's first talk about angle angle side triangle congruence. Here's a diagram of two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. For two triangles to be congruent using the angle angle side postulate, or AAS postulate, two of the angles and both triangles must be congruent to each other, and one of their sides must be congruent. Now you'll notice in AAS that the S comes after the two A's, not between them, which means that the side that you're looking for in congruency should not be the side between those two angles. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a look at these two triangles and imagine that angle A is congruent to angle X, and angle B is congruent to angle Y. Now you couldn't write that side AB is congruent to side XY because as we said, the side cannot be congruent between those two angles, so we'll get rid of that. The side has to be outside of those two angles, so in this case I'm going to say segment BC is congruent to segment YZ. You could have also said that segment AC is congruent to segment XZ. Either one of those would work. So in terms of an actual math problem, what this means is that we could actually put in numbers here and prove congruency. For example, if you knew that this triangle side length was 4, and this triangle side length was 4, and this triangle side length was 3, because of the angle-angle side postulate, knowing that these two angles a and B are congruent to angles X and Y, and that segment BC is congruent to segment YZ, you can tell that these two triangles are congruent. So you could say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Therefore, side XZ would be 3 units in length, side XY would be 4 units in length, and side YZ would be 4 units in length. Let's take a look at the next congruency postulate, which is angle side angle. All right, angle side angle, or ASA, refers to when you have two triangles that have two angles that are congruent and one side that's congruent for both triangles. Now you'll notice that the side in this triangle falls between the two angles, right there. The S comes between the two A's meaning that on these two triangles, whatever two angles are congruent, the congruent side must fall in between those two angles. So let's start with angle Q on the blue triangle. Let's make it congruent to angle T on the green triangle. And let's say that angle R is congruent to angle U. Well, for this postulate to work, the angle side angle postulate, the side that's congruent must be the side between those two angles. If you take a look at that, you'll realize that the only side between those two angles is on the blue triangle, side QR, and on the green side, triangle, side TU. Now, as we discussed in the AAS postulate, once you've proven that there is an angle side angle relationship between two triangles, you've proven them congruent. So, you could solve a math problem such as this. If you knew that triangle QRS was congruent to triangle TUV, and you knew that segment QR was 2x and segment TU was 10, well, you would know that those two parts are congruent, so you could set them equal to each other. If you knew that 2x is equal to 10, you could then just divide by 2 on both sides of the equation to get x alone, and you would know that x equals 5. And if you plug that in, you'll see that 2 times 5 is 10 for segment QR, and that's congruent to segment TU, which is also 10. Now let's take a look at hypotenuse leg triangle congruency. With hypotenuse leg triangle congruency, you need to prove that the two hypotenuses are congruent and one leg is also congruent between both triangles. 
Once that's established, you know that those two triangles are congruent in all other aspects. So let's start with the hypotenuse. If I were to say that the hypotenuse of triangle DEF, we know it's EF because we know that if you ever have a hypotenuse, you must have a right triangle. And since we're working with the hypotenuse leg theorem, we're going to know that these two are right triangles. So if DEF is a right triangle and HIJ is a right triangle, then hypotenuse EF, we're going to say, is congruent to hypotenuse IJ. Now, if either leg is congruent on either one, let's say leg ED is congruent to HI, then these two triangles are congruent using the hypotenuse leg triangle congruency postulate. However, if the other leg was congruent, so DF is congruent to HJ, it's still congruent using the hypotenuse leg congruency postulate. It doesn't matter which leg you use, so long as you have the hypotenuse and one leg. So just like before, let's talk about angles in this case. Let's make it a math problem with angles. So if angle E were 40 degrees on triangle DEF, what would angle I be on triangle HIJ? Well, you can tell from the congruency tick marks on these two the triangle DEF must be congruent to triangle HIJ because of the triangle or the hypotenuse leg triangle congruency postulate. That means angle E right here in the middle of DEF must be congruent to angle I in the middle of HIJ. So angle I must be 40 degrees as well. That's how you use the AAS and ASA and HL triangle congruency postulates.